Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you for the awesome day that we get to have with you. Yeah. Thank you for this awesome church service that we get to share with friends. Yes. We get to share with one another. We get to share with family. I really thank you for how you can draw us to the cross and at communion. I really thank you for how you inspire us to build your kingdom and a contribution. And I really pray for this lesson right here, Lord, that you teach us what it takes to be leaders for you. That you teach us what it takes to go out there and take our experience with Jesus with you to, the, to those out there in the world there. All right, thank you for this time. It's in Jesus my prayer. Amen. Amen. So good morning, guys. So today we are starting our Christian with our trilogy, Titus. Okay. And this goes, this goes along with our awesome campaign we got going, easy as one, two, three. So Titus consists of three chapters. So it does go with our campaign, easy as one, two, three. So our title for today is The Tease of Titus. So, I want to ask, what is leadership? Ooh. What qualities does it take for someone to be a leader? What qualifies us to be leaders? Well, in the book of Titus, it, the, it was written in the day and age of the Roman Empire. And so in the Roman Empire, they believed in emperor worship. So this is when the emperor claims to be a child of God. This is when the emperor claims to be God. And this was their reasoning for why people should obey them, why people should listen to them and follow them. Mm -hmm. leaders, other leaders of this time were people who killed the most in battle, mm -hmm. were people who had the most bloodshed, had the most victories. There were also people who slept with the most women. There were also people who grew up in wealthy, country, wealthy families. Though we see that the throne wasn't a throne passed on by God. It was a throne passed on, yes, with God allowing it, but through deceit and murder. Mm. A leader came about by the person he killed above him. So, what makes it any different today? Well, today we look at leaders, and sometimes we can think a leader is someone who has the most likes on Instagram. I want the most likes on Instagram so people can follow me. Mm. Apparently, the, the number is the number of people you, who follow you. People also want to. People also think it's the person who sings the best that is the best leader. The person who's the strongest is the best leader. The person who's the fittest. And to round it all up, whoever comes up on top. That is what is seen as a leader in most, most eyes. But a little example in my life of how, just starts off, of how that's not quite it, is when I began to lead a group of people, a Bible talk, I thought I had to be like this. I had to be the person on top. So I thought, I had to be the one to always get things right. So uh, it always just reminds me of times when someone will have an incredible suggestion. Mm. Hey Chris, we should do this. And it was so incredible because it wasn't my idea. I was like, no, we shouldn't do that. That's stupid. <laughs> we should do this. And it was just half of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I always thought I had to be the person who was right. In that Bible discussion, uh, I even had people wake up early in the morning, travel across London for, to get there at 6 a.m. in the morning, so they would have had to leave their houses at 5, and uh, pray every day. So I was very religious and uh, had people do what I thought was better for them. Uh, this resulted with sisters crying every morning. Um, <laughs> every morning they came out, they cried. Uh, this led to complaints against me. Uh, when I heard them, I was like, no way! I told him to do this, he didn't do this, so I was right to give him a rebuke. Uh, there was even people just getting depressed in my Bible talk. No one wanted to be there. My bad leadership led to me not having friends. And so, it's crazy. When the world says this is leadership, it's pretty crazy. So this brings us to Titus today. To find out what is a leader. And so, Titus, he's a Greek Christian. And he's considered to be a partner with Paul in the Gospel, in both Galatians chapter 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So, he was one of the three people who Paul considered to be a son in, his faith, a son in the faith. He was leading his own church, and Paul was writing this letter titled Titus to help him in his leadership. So this brings us to point number one. Titles don't make leaders. And we're going to read Titus chapter 1 from verse 1. Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ to further the faith and God's elect. And uh, sorry, and their knowledge of the truth. Uh, sorry, their knowledge of the truth that leads 
to godliness, in hope and eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, and which now, at his appointed season, he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Saviour. To Titus, my true son, in our common faith, grace and peace from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Saviour. So it's a uh, little, uh, we also send out an email, so if you don't have to email, nudge the person next to you and they can send you the email for less than one. So Paul referred to himself as a servant. Paul refers to himself as a servant multiple times in the scriptures. In Philemon chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy our brother. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and our brother Sir Sylvanus. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. You see, in these introductions, Paul understands his role as a leader. Mm. He understands who he is as a leader. He was not a leader because of his talents. He was a leader because of God's grace to pick him. He didn't claim the spot. He didn't say, hey, I am an apostle, listen to me. He introduces himself as a servant. Here he says he uses the word elect. What does this mean? Never has the word elect ever referred to a group of people who are predestined to be saved. It is often referred to, uh, referred to Israel, the angels, Christians, and others who are chosen for the task. To be chosen does not mean you are saved. For example, Israel. Multiple times in the Old Testament, we see Israel going to God, and they're God's chosen people, but then they fall off the path and they go against God, over and over and over again. Paul was chosen for the task, and he had no feeling of entitlement here. So, how did Paul serve? He gave his life to his ministry. We see Paul limit his own freedom, his own freedom of choice, by introducing himself as a servant. We see Paul serve from prison. We see, we see Paul serve in his ministry under house arrest. It's not about the quantity of the sheep. It's about the quality of the shepherd. Uh, my grandfather, I went to visit my grandfather this Saturday and he told me about how, she, uh, how shepherds um, shave their sheep. And so the best shepherd is someone who can shave the sheep without leaving a scratch, but do it quickly. That allows, there are shepherds out there, not, sh not shepherds today, sheep shearers, but uh, yeah. <laughs> there are sheep shearers out there today who go through 600 sheep a day without scratching them. Wow. It's, not a, it's not about the quantity of sheep though, it's about the quality, how you leave that sheep after you've cut off their hair. So we get to see Paul's goal for the people in his ministry. He looks to further their faith and he looks to Give them more knowledge in the truth. His goal is for them to be led to godliness. He wasn't focused on having the best ministry compared to other churches in the world. He just had a hope in eternal life which he looked to give to everyone else around him. And so in Paul we get to see a leader that really served others. And with this, he was entrusted with the preaching. Are you trustworthy with the preaching today? An example of a trustworthy, I, I can only come up with bad examples right now. <laughs> every, every, weekend, uh, every weekend in London, my grandfather would give me 20 pounds. So that's about $40, close to $40 here. And I was about 14 to 60. He'd give me 20 pounds and say, hey Chris, I'm entrusting you with this 20 pounds. Keep it. I think a couple of times he even gave me $50 notes. So, um, me being me, uh, we'd go past the shop every morning and I had a very, very, very sweet tooth. <laughs> and so every morning I'd go out and buy myself some sweets. Halfway through lunch, I'd sneak out of school under a little hole in the gate and I'd go to the store and buy me some sweets. After school, I'd go to the store and buy me some sweets. And then I'll go back to school for some clubs and then after the clubs, I'll go back to the store and buy myself some more sweets. At some point, my grandfather came back and said, Hey Chris, after a couple of months, so by this time I should have just above 200 pounds. He came back and he said, Hey Chris, um, where is where's the money I gave you? And of course, I, I really had the desire to bring it all back. I just had no job. 
So uh, I had to come up with an excuse real quick. Granddad, uh, I lost it. Or maybe some of it was stolen. But uh, I don't have it anymore. So. <laughs> so let's not follow that example of what it means to be trustworthy. Instead, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, it says, In all things you have heard me say, in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Mm. We've got to entrust things to reliable God entrusts things to reliable people. He gives it to them to go out there and to use. So, question is, are you misusing the scriptures today? Are you misusing the scriptures in how you speak? Are you misusing the scriptures in what you do? I want to give you guys a challenge. Point one, to be a servant. To serve people this week. To serve one person each day. Why is that? Because a servant is trustworthy. A servant honors the person they are serving. I like to think of the but Batman's butler. He never told anyone who Batman was. And so in the same way, hey, let's be servants to other people and really honor the word of God yeah. and be trustworthy. Bye. Point number two. Talents don't make leaders. We're going to read from verse 5. The reason I left you in Crete, in Crete uh, was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I direct you. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and not open to the charge of being wild or disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be, hospi he must hospi be a hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, dis uh, disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he can encourage others by the sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. Titus was left to put things in order. He was left to appoint leaders. Not a single town should be left without a leader. I wonder how many leaders we have to make here in Auckland for the towns in New Zealand. Wow. How many leaders need to be appointed? And then we also have the Pacific Islands after that. I think of my life, uh, when I had no leader in my life, I grew up with my father, uh, we grew up full of together for a while, my father, my sister, and then my mom came along, my stepmom came along. But growing up with my dad, the one thing that was missing was his presence and single father, so a single father, there was a lot of struggles. Uh, he had to be mom, he had to cook. I remember one meal he cooked, it wasn't quite nice, and he was really upset. I really wanted to encourage him that day. But um, one thing that was missing is just a leader, a uh, personal leader in our lives. I remember um, there were nights where I just felt as if I was messing up with my dad's life because I wasn't helping him enough. Uh, there were a couple of days where I just went to bed and I, I wanted to cry, I wanted to be upset. And uh, it really uh, helps with just thinking about what he said when he heard me crying and I walked to him and said, hey, I love you so much. And I always hold it with me. But one thing that uh, I wish I had a leader in is when it comes to learning and having confidence in what I learned and how to put it out there. Um, growing up, I didn't quite, that my dad wasn't there often, the teacher, I wasn't, uh, I didn't behave well, so the teachers didn't really help out that much. And so uh, my reading, my writing, my spelling was terrible. Um, and so I didn't, I, I didn't have someone to help me with my spelling. I didn't have someone to help me in what I could read. I remember my aunt, uh, my aunt once bought this little childish book for me. And she said, hey, hey Chris, read this book to me. And it was a book where there were about two lines on each page, and I was about 12 years old, and I struggled with something like that. And it's always been something that I've struggled with. I never wanted to read out in front of people, which is funny because I have a script today, so it shows how much I've grown. <laughs> oh my God. It's been something that's always been on top. It's always been something that's taken away my confidence. It's always been something that's made me scared. It's always been something to hold me back. Mm. and to be studying for up until today and to have to read things and to have to go out and do presentations it's still something that can be on my back from time to time and so when we have a leader in our life we see just how much a leader can help us in different ways if 
I had more of a leader, I'm sure I would have, I would have been better in school. I'm sure I would have been a better, I would have had a better role model to teach me how to think about learning and how to go after it. So even those in this church who don't actually want to be leaders, I want you guys to think about someone who, who is helpless because of your selfishness. Right? Because you don't want to give to them. If I had someone in my life, I, I wish I had someone in my life. And so in the same way, I want you guys to, to really think about what it means to be a leader, who you can help, and really make that change. For in Judges chapter 17, verse 6, it says, In those days, Israel had no king, and everyone saw his fit. My CBC in his fit was going out there and buying sweets and not learning. <laughs> so, so, no sound doctrine, no encouragement, no protection from persecutors, and given away for false teachers to grow up. This is what happens when there is no leader. And people's Aww. life. But there was a call to appoint leaders. There was a call to appoint elders. And Paul gives the standard right here. The, the, the standards are high. Yeah. And Titus was there to make leaders. So appoint them in house churches. There's not a lot of emphasis on talent. It wasn't talent they were teaching. Mm -hmm. It was character. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing my character grow. I used to, when I first joined the church in London, I had a scruffy afro. It was the biggest throw I could ever imagine myself having. But the thing is, uh, hair is very funny. Um, no hair on your head grows the same as another piece of hair on your head. So uh, there were patches that were a bit indented. And so I looked like a satellite dish. <laughs> and so I have this big afro and then there's this big dent in the top. And it was terrible. Most nights it will, it will curl up and it will look sh uh, shabby. And I'd uh, come, come to church like that. And so the church leader looked at me one day. He shook his head. Okay. Uh, a couple of days later, my disciple and someone who mentors me came up to me and said, Chris, you need to shave your head. It is just messy. <laughs> and so that helped me and my character. Why? Because it called me to look after how I look. It called me to have a self respect about my appearance. It called me to have a respect about how I looked and presented myself. And so. There are other areas in my life where it came to even wanting to please others instead of going out there and living my own life. I was called to have more character in that, to, to have convictions in what I know and what I believe is right and what's wrong. To not go against my conscience because I wanted to please another person. Mm. I had, it allowed me to have models to imitate and so by being able to imitate people, I myself became someone to imitate. I myself had a character to imitate. And so I became I became a leader by producing character so that I can then go to a place where leaders is needed. Auckland is a place where leaders are meet needed. Yeah. So, another little question, are you here to be a leader or are you just tagging along in wow. Auckland where leaders are meeting? So, the characters of a leader. Paul gives us 14 characteristics. Wow. Faithful to his wife, a good parent, blameless, not overbearing, not quick tempered, not given to drunkenness, and not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain, hospitable, hospitable, one who loves what is good, self controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. I know only Sean and Ian and Tegan and Margot can really be judged on who's a good husband or good wife <laughs> and good parent. But for the rest of us, there are still 12 characteristics that we can take on to become a good leader. Yeah. So, we need to be the leaders that God wants us to be. The leaders that the world needs, not leaders that we want to be. Mm. And so these are characteristics that we need to go after. So, a little challenge. I want you to look at this list. Take this moment right now, look at this list. And take one of them that you believe you need to work on. Could be self-control. Maybe you need some self-control in that needs some self-control in how you love people, appreciate people. Have you been going to class late these days or going to work late? Are you overbearing? Are you quick-tempered? Do you want to be faithful to your wife, Sean? <laughs> I want you to take one, of, take one of these, write it down, and then talk to someone about it after the service. And then go home today with two practicals of how you can work on these things. One of them being to study the Bible. So this brings us to our last point, coming in for a close. Come on. But from verse 10 it says, For there are many, rebe there are many rebellious people, 
full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those of the circumcision group. They must be silenced because they are disrupting whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach. And that for, for the sake of dishonest gain, once the Crete, one of the Crete's own prophets has said, Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. This saying is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in faith and will pay no attention to Jewish myths for to the, or to merely human commands of those who reject the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to, but, but to those who are corrupt and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and conscience are corrupt. They claim to know God, but their actions, but in their, but by their actions they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit to, for doing anything good. So, the Cretans, the cult, their culture was in Greek. It, uh, this word means Cretism. Cretism. This means to be a liar. And this was what a Cretan was. This is what it meant. So they were known to have many harbors. And they, they were a country that really connected the Mediterranean Sea. They grew up with many Greek gods. And so they often compared the Greek gods to the god of the Bible. And they even believed that Zeus was born on their, on their own island. Some were actually saved in Acts chapter 2 uh, from verse 10 when uh, Peter preaches to the people and there are many saved. So where are these false teachers today? Well, believe it or not, that they're right under your nose. Some people, some of us, can often think, hey, there aren't, any, there aren't many false teachers. There are very few. But you'd be surprised. Some of them are even among us. So how do you know what is meaningless talk and deception? Well, if we check out uh, Numbers chapter 13 from verse 27, it says, they gave Moses an account of this. So Moses sends out a group of people to go check out the land. And this is the account they came up with. We went into the land to which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. Here are some of its fruits. But the people who live there are powerful. Their cities are fortified. And the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Adam there. The Amalekites live in the nave. The Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land. We can certainly do it. Here we see, one, here we see Caleb silencing the, non, the faithless talk. Here we see Caleb shutting them up. Examples of this can often be, hey, I just can't find anyone who wants to study the Bible. Mm. This could be, hey, I just don't think I can get through my exams. I don't think I'll ever find love. And I don't think anyone wants to be a disciple. Elders are there to silence the false talk. Elders are there to silence talk like this. Leaders are there to silence talk like this. It wasn't just um, just, it wasn't just Sean's, it isn't just Sean's job, it, isn't, it wasn't just Titus's job, it was the job of everyone around him. So here we see that we need to be leaders who silence false talk. Paul had a strong conviction against false teachings. And I really wondered just how many false teachers he encountered in his time. I really wondered just how much of an impact the false teachers had in the life of his time. How many false teachers took people away and actually led them wow. to say to himself, I think this always reminds me of the false teachings in London. Now, in London, uh, there are many people who fell away because they simply just wanted to get married. But it wasn't just be stretched beyond that. They fell away because they wanted to get married and be immoral before marriage. There was even one couple who avoided coming to church because she, they had been immoral and she got pregnant. They, the only time they actually said about it, said anything about it, was when it was too late for them. It was no longer possible for them to hide from pregnancy. And so what did they do? They went to a place where they said it was okay. 
You can have sex before marriage. It's okay. You can do whatever you want. It's okay. You can have these idols in your life. You can stay as an illegal immigrant here in this country and get married uh, illegally and remain here for as long as you want. So they got taken over to another place where false teaching was preached. And unfortunately, it's hard to say that these people aren't saved anymore because they took what they wanted to do. They wanted to live this way and so they went away from the teachings of the scriptures. Mm. So we are actually called to rebuke sharply those who teach false teachings. So what does it mean to rebuke sharply? If you're not cutting someone, they're not going to change. Mm. If you're not calling them to sound faith, then you're not calling them to anything at all. And they're still going to go, go away. An, exa an example of just how deep a cut is meant to be. Has anyone ever gotten a paper cut? Mm. The moment you get those, you start holding paper differently. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting a paper cut in the most annoying spot. Oh, yeah. Right between your fingers. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, what a disgusting one is right between your toes. Oh, that would be a little paper down at, at your feet. But oh. once you get a paper cut, you do not want it again. Yeah. This is the kind of cut we gotta do when there is false teaching. Yeah. This yeah. is the kind of cut where we gotta apply when someone is speaking faithless talk, saying we can't do it, saying God isn't going to do it. Mm. We have gotta cut so that we can call many back to a sound doctrine. Mm. So, on, to the pure, all things are pure. Yeah. To the pure, they have to be first made pure. Yeah. It's not possible for someone to just be pure. So what does a leader do? A leader purifies the people around them. A leader makes things pure. A leader must first make themselves pure and then purify others. Yeah. In their actions, in their thoughts, in their speech. The corrupt, the corrupt allow themselves to go wherever they want. It's kind of like a computer. A corrupt computer allows anything to happen. It allows more viruses in, and it gets more and more corrupt. I'm sure no one here wants to buy a corrupt computer. So why would you go with corrupt doctrine? Why would you go with corrupt faith? Paul was tired of people claiming that they're with God when they're actually far away from God. He was sick and tired of people who said they were with God but spat in his faith by their face, by their actions. Mm -hmm. The challenge is today is to call out false doctrine. To call it out. Be the leader that you need to be in the lives of the people around you. Be the leader that you need to be in the lives of your friends, your parents, and those in your class, those in your workplace. Be the leader that you need to be in their lives. Call out false hope. Call out false faith. And call out false talk. So, the three T's of Titus. Come on, bro. Three okay. points and three challenges. The first one, titles don't make leaders. Be a servant to someone this week. Serve someone. And be a trustworthy servant with the word of God. Talents don't make leaders. It's about your character. No one here was born with a character. It's something that was built along the way. There is hope that your character can change. Take one of these things, take one of these traits, and really put it into action today. And then silence, so talk is silenced by leaders. Go out there and silence the false talk against your own life. Silence the false talk in your own head. And silence the false talk around you. Cool. That is my challenge for you guys today, and to uh, be the glory. <laughs>